Hello and welcome to another edition of Growth Points. Today we will be taking a look at Acts chapter 6 verses 1 through 7. When we read the description of the early church, the miracles, the sharing of generosity, the fellowship, it's possible that we wish that we could have been a part of this quote perfect church. See, we may look at the early church and think of it as a perfect church, but we must realize and recognize that the early church had challenges just as we have challenges in church today. No church has ever been or will ever be perfect until Jesus and his followers are united at his second coming. So all churches have difficulties, all churches have challenges, all churches experience problems, if you will. Beginning with verse number one of Acts chapter six. In those days, when the numbers of when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So we see that in the early church there is an internal problem that developed between the Hebrew-speaking Christians, more than likely the local Jews who had been converted, and the Greek-speaking Christians, probably Jews from other lands who had been converted at Pentecost. And the Greek-speaking Christians complained that their widows were being unfairly treated. This favoritism was probably not intentional, but it was more than likely caused by the language barrier. And to correct this situation, the apostles put seven respected Greek-speaking men in charge of the food distribution program. And this solved the problem and it allowed the apostles to keep their focus on teaching and preaching the good news about Jesus. Verse number two. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word in order, the word of God, in order to wait on tables. Now the twelve are the eleven original disciples, plus Matthias, who had been chosen to replace Judas Iscariot. And as the early church increased in its size, so did its needs. And one of the great needs was to organize the distribution of the food to the poor. The apostles needed to focus on preaching, so they chose other individuals to administer the food program. We realize and we recognize that each person has a vital part and a vital role to play in the life of the church. If you are in a position of leadership and you find yourself overwhelmed by the responsibilities, determine your God-given abilities and, priorita and priorities and then find others to assist you. If you are not in leadership, you have gifts that can be used by God in various areas of church ministry. And I would encourage you to offer these gifts in service to Him. Verse number three, Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the, of the Spirit and wisdom, and we will turn this responsibility over to them. This administrative task was, was not taken lightly. Notice the requirements for the men who were to handle the food program. They were to be well-respected men, and they were to be men who were full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. People who carry heavy responsibilities and work closely with others 
should have these qualities. Qualities that they are well respected, that they are full of the Holy Spirit, and that they are full of wisdom. So we must look for spiritually mature, wise men and women to serve as leaders in our churches. Verse number four. And we'll give our attention to, the, to prayer and the ministry of the word. The apostles' priorities were correct. The ministry of the word should never be neglected because of administrative burdens. Pastors should not try or to be expected to try to do everything. Instead, the work of the church should be spread out among its covenant partners. Verses 5 and 6. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenes, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. You see, spiritual leadership is a serious business that should not be taken lightly by the church or its leaders. And in the early church, these chosen men were commissioned. They were commissioned by prayer and with the laying on of hands by the apostles. And we see that the laying on of hands on someone is an ancient Jewish practice. And it was a way to set a person apart for special service. You can read about this in Numbers chapter 27 verse number 23 and Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse number 9 verse 7. So the word of God spread and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Jesus had told the apostles that they would first be witnesses in Jerusalem. And in a short time, their message had infiltrated an entire city and all levels of society. Even some of the Jewish priests were being converted. This would be an obvious violation of the wishes of the high council and that would endanger their position. You see, the Word of God spread like ripples on a pond where from a single center each wave touches the next, spreading wider and further. And the good news still spreads this way today. Even though we have found ourselves in, in quarantine and experiencing a pandemic, we realize and recognize that the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is spreading wider and further. You see, you and I, we don't have to change the world single-handedly. It is enough just to be part of the wave, touching those around you, who in turn will touch others until all have felt this movement. Do not ever feel that your part is insignificant or unimportant. Each and every one of us plays a significant part and an important part in spreading the good news of Jesus, the hope of Jesus, the life-changing message of Jesus. May I pray with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to look at your word. May we all realize and recognize that we each have a vital role to play in the kingdom of God. Each and every one of us has an important part, an important role to play in your kingdom. 
So I ask God that you would order and direct our steps. I pray this prayer of blessing over each one of you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you His favor and give you His peace. Because of you, Jesus, and the hope of heaven, we believe and we know the best is yet to come. Amen.